Good evening and welcome to the Gospel Truth. I'm Brother Alan Jackson, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for blessing me with this, another outpouring of his tender love and mercy, and that he's allowed me once again to be on this the time side of life and have this another blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as I always do, I'd like to continue to express my appreciation to the production staff for their continued service to the gospel truth. And it's my prayer that God will continue to bless each one of them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And I'm praying on your behalf as participant observers. And it's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family with all of those things that he knows that you're standing in need of as well. And then, of course, I'm encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer, and it's only God who can provide me with those things that I am standing in need of. And so this evening, before we do get into the message, I have my prayer list and a song. So right now we're going to get into our prayer list, and we continue to pray on behalf of Annette Jeffrey. Geraldine Keyes, Elizabeth, uh, excuse me, that's uh, Emma Jean Hayes, Elizabeth Adams, Yvonne Davis, and we're also praying on behalf of the Ahmad Aubrey family, the Brianna Taylor family, and we're also praying on behalf of Teresa Watson and Virginia Daniels, Deborah Price, Teresa Wanzo, and we're also praying on behalf of Joe Brokaw, Brother Josie Pitt Sr. and family. We're also praying on behalf of Sheldon Horton, Jim Young, Nancy Lagarde, the Rashad Brooks family, Shelley Lopez County, Cornelius County, Shirley Finn, the Jacob Blake family, the Daniel Prude family, Annie Riley and the Flowers family. We're praying for Sister Perlene Jesse, Candace Powers, Terrence Bailey, Wilma Carpenter, Sherry Drumgoo, Betty Williams of The Connection, and Bethany Williams, Vanita Coates, Susan Gilmer and family, and we're praying on behalf of Brother James Walker Sr., Dorothy Lofton, Sister Brenda Williams, and uh, especially for her brother and sister, the George Floyd family, Vincent Jones Jr., Ayanna Rowe, and Sister Hannah Parker. And those are the names that we have on our prayer list this evening, so we're encouraging you to pray on their behalf. And if you don't remember their names, that's quite all right. God knows who they are. But if you would just be kind enough in your prayers, if you would utter to God to bless those that are on the gospel truth prayer list, that will be sufficient. And you will be blessed also as a result of your selfless act to pray on behalf of people perhaps that you don't even know. All right? So right now we have uh, Chris Turner standing by, and he's going to be singing tonight, It's Raining. So without any further remarks, Chris Turner, It's Raining. <laughs> But I'm waiting for it to be alright. It's pouring, but I'm not worried. Cause it rained before. It's been hard, but I made it with God on my side. I can ride the storm. I can ride, ride the storm. Just hold on. Lord, it's, it's raining. But I'm waiting for it to be alright. It's pouring, but I'm not worried. Cause it rained before. It's been hard, but I made it with God on my side. I can ride the storm. I can ride, ride the storm. Yes, I can. Just hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Skies are cloudy and gray. Trouble winds blowing. I need a shelter, tell me where could I go? The 
certainly would like to express our appreciation to Chris Turner for that fine song, It's Raining. This evening, I would like to invite your attention to the book of Proverbs, the first chapter, and the verse is number 33. And the Bible reads thusly, But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. All right? And so it is from this verse this evening that I have selected for a subject free from the fear of evil. Free from the fear of evil. Now evil is that which is profoundly immoral and wicked. And I came by tonight to offer you an escape from evil. Violence has exploded on our city streets. A total disregard for life is displayed by murderers and disrespect for fellow citizens. Evidence of self-hatred. We don't love one another. There is a constant display of stupidity as side shows continue. Jesus said, it, the world would know that you were his disciples if you had love one to another, John 13 and 35. Now, to my viewing audience, just keep in mind that I am still praying on your behalf that God will continue to hide you in his pavilion. Now, today there is a cry for peace, but there is 
no peace. We are a fearless and lawless people. We as a whole don't fear God or man. Laws don't mean anything to us. We just celebrated the 4th of July. The skies lit up all over the Bay Area with illegal fireworks against all local laws. A total disregard for property. People lost homes due to fires caused by fireworks. We are a mean-spirited and a vindictive people. But now, but now we want a safe city. For you to be safe, you must trust in the Lord. The Bible says, the fear of man bringeth a snare, but whosoever putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Proverbs 29 and 25. Let us hear the voice of God. Over there in Proverbs, the first chapter, beginning with verse number 24, let's hear the words of God. He says, because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But you have set at naught all my counsel and with none of my reproof. I also uh -huh, will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and uh, your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of the fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. Now God assures us safety to those who hearken unto him. Now, our fear is upon us. We want our cities to be safe. People, you must hearken to the word of God. James tells us to draw near unto God and he will draw near to you. James 4 and the verses number 8. Today is the day to come to Jesus and when you come to him, he promises to never leave you nor forsake you, Hebrews 13 and 5. And he also says that he will go with you all the way, even to the end of the world, Matthew 28 and 20. And so you can be free of evil by coming to Jesus, and he makes it very easy. In Mark, 1229, Jesus answered and said, the first of all commandment is to hear, O Israel, that the Lord our God is one Lord. He is the creator of all humanity. Now, you must hear how Jesus died for our sins, how he was buried, and that he arose from the dead. And that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through four. In fact, I think I'll go over there so that you can hear the words as it is written upon the pages of inspiration and know that these are the words of the Lord and not just Alan Jackson. Paul says in, in, in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 4, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. He says, by which also ye are saved. In other words, you're saved by the gospel, by your obedience to it. He says, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. 
And then he goes on to say, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I re also received, how that Christ died for our sin according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So again, you must hear the gospel, which is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then once you understand that, then you'll be able to know that the Lord is a safe keeper to those of you who would put your trust in him. And David, yes, David, he knew of God's safety. And he wrote over there in Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He, le he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Uh-huh. Yes, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk in Oakland through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepareth the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, now, he didn't say Oakland, but I just threw that in so you would understand that as we walk through Oakland today, which could be considered the valley of the shadow of death with all the bullets that are flying and all the killings that's going on, that's the point I was making. But no, no, you know, he didn't say Oakland, but just understand the point that I was making. So I'm trying to get you to understand that David knew of God's safety. And he said, the Lord is my shepherd. And we know about shepherds, they take good care of the sheep. And so David said, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want, because he was being well taken care of. And then he went on to say that even though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, uh, and that's where many of us today are walking in Oakland, in the shadow of death, bullets are flying all over, but you see, David said, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. All right? So we just need to understand that when you come to the Lord and when you become his child, he takes good care of you. He puts his arms of protection around you. He guards you and keeps you safe from harm, danger, and evil. All right? So you hear the word of God that is important, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then, of course, you must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus said, if you believe not that I am he, you will die in your sins. And where I am there, you cannot come. And that's John 8 and 24. And then, of course, you must keep in mind that you must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, 11th chapter, verse number 6, he says, without faith, or faith is our belief, all right? So either without faith or without belief, it is impossible to please God. Because if you come to God, then of course you must believe that God is, that he exists. Uh, and not only that he exists, but that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And if you seek the Lord today, you can find him. But don't wait too late because one day uh -huh, we're all going to quit the busy walks of life. Yes, we're going to lay down to get up no more. We're going to be laid in our coffins and our arms are going to be folded and our mouths are going to be hushed in death. It's going to be too late then to try to come to the Lord and make your peace with him. All right, so you must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You must be willing to make that confession. Then you must be willing to repent of all of your sins. Luke 13, 3, Jesus said, I tell you, nay, but except you repent, you shall also likewise perish. And then we find the book is Acts, the 17th chapter, and the verse is number 30. And at the time of that ignorance, God winked at it. But now, hear that? But now he commands all men everywhere to repent. You need to come on out from sin, 
Uh huh. Stand up and shame the devil and come on to the Lord. All right. Then, of course, you must be willing to confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And again, Jesus said, except you believe that I'm he, you're going to die in your sins. And where I am, there you cannot come. Matthew 10, 32, he says, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I also confess before my Father, which is in heaven. And then he goes on to say, But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Then we can go to the book of Romans, the 10th chapter, and the verse number 10, and we find the Bible says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, uh-huh, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And what is that confession? That you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's the same, uh-huh, confession that the Ethiopian eunuch made. You know, the Ethiopian eunuch over there in, in, in the book of Acts, the 8th chapter, you know, that old black man who had been to Jerusalem uh -huh, to worship and was on his way back to Ethiopia when God sent an angel down there to direct Philip to get him on the right track. Why? Because God was concerned about the soul of that black man. And so what happened was then when Philip went down to the chariot and, and he asked the man who was reading, he said, do you understand what you're reading? And he asked him, he said, well, how can I except some man should guide me? And then he desired Philip that he would get up on the chariot with him. And so the Bible says uh, Philip got on board with him, and they began to uh, go on down the road. And, and, and Philip heard him preach, and the place in Scripture say he was read, led like a lamb to the slaughter, like a sheep dumb before his shearer. And then, of course, the eunuch asked, he said, well, now, who is he talking about? Is he speaking of himself or of some other man? Well, that was the opening that Philip needed. This was the opportunity for him to proclaim Jesus to the Ethiopian eunuch. And so as a result of, of Philip preaching to the Ethiopian eunuch, the Bible says as they came down the road, they came to a certain water. So in the process of preaching Jesus to the Ethiopian eunuch, Pete Philip had told him about baptism. Well, how do you know that? Because the Bible says when they came to a certain water that the eunuch asked him, he said, See, there's some water over there. What's going to keep me or what does hinder me from being baptized? And then Philip said to him, If you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you may. Here's the confession. He says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's the same confession that you and I must make in order to make heaven our home, all right? So we must confess that. As the Bible said over there in Romans 10 and verse number 10, for with the heart, in other words, in the mind, you believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth, you make that confession. So you have to confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and you must do that publicly. And, and Jesus said, Whosoever shall confess me, that's Matthew 10, 32 and 33, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I also confess before my Father, which is in heaven. And then, my friends, last but not least, you must be willing to be buried in the liquid grave of baptism for the remission of your sins. You must be born again. If you remember the conversation that Jesus had with Nicodemus over there in the book of John, the third chapter, and around about third, verse number three, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So we're talking about a spiritual rebirth. In fact, even uh, Nicodemus was somewhat puzzled. And he, he, he said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born? Well, Jesus had to clarify to let him know that he wasn't talking about a physical birth, but a spiritual birth. He said, verily I say unto you, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And so we know that on the day of Pentecost, when 
uh, Peter and the apostles preached the first gospel sermon and he told them how that they had taken with wicked hands and crucified and slain our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ but God recognized it and that he shouldn't be holding of it he raised him up loosing the pains of death and as a result of that preaching they were pricked in their hearts and they came to Peter and the apostles and said men and brethren what shall we do? And then Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells me that on that day there were some 3,000 souls who came to Jesus that they might have an opportunity to be saved. Now, one of the things that we need to keep in mind is that God, He is still in control. You might remember over there in Acts, the 12th chapter, uh -huh, verses 1 through 11, you know Peter had been captured and put in prison, all right? But we know that prayer was being made on his behalf by the church. And we know that God sent an angel and loosed his bonds and released him from prison. We know that in the midst of this pandemic, God is still in control. In the midst of all the killings in our cities, God is still in control. In the midst of the fires that are burning in our land, God is still in control. Because we recognize that God is still in control, we are not afraid of danger. We are not afraid to suffer. We are not afraid to trust God's care. Now, I'm Alan Jackson. And I'm inviting you to join us again next week, if it's God's will, when the gospel truth will once again come your way, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word. Until then, it is my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family and to keep you all safe.